Wasn't I out in the road myself the day he passed? On a spank and spank new shiny bicycle, and he all dressed up to the nines. Sure you'd swear to the Queen's wedding itself he was going. He'd a fine pair of brogues on him with a sheen off him that you could see your old face looking back at you in. A tweed breeches with a matching waistcoat and jacket. A gold chain for his timepiece. And to top it all off, a Italian cap on his head, which he tipped as he passed me and said, Top of the morning to you, sir. As if he hadn't a care in the world. <laughs> but I could tell by the lilt in his voice that he wasn't from these parts at all at all. And wasn't I talking to the Thatcher O'Brien later in the day? And he told me that he was a Yank all the way from America. All the way from America? So where else would a Yank be from but America? <laughs> but sure you couldn't go telling that to the Thatcher. For if you did, wouldn't he go into high dungeons? And he wouldn't talk to no one for a month. Not even the Pope if he happened to pass this way. And to know another thing that the Thatcher told, told me was that the Yank was after buying Conway's cottage. That he reckoned his ancestors came from there. Divil the bit they did. Should them Conway's never went abroad beyond the school gate, never mind to America. No, as far as I know, his people were over there from Russian. Wasn't there a family of Carnies over there? And there was three sisters in that family. And two, two, two oldest girls, didn't they go into the nuns? And the youngest one, Noni May, didn't she marry a fella up there from the Palatine Road by the name of O'Donnell, Paddy O'Donnell? Am I right there, Sheila? That's right. Yeah. Wasn't there an aunt of an uncle of yours somewhere related to them? And so she was telling me all about him. And when Noni May and Paddy got married, didn't they hit off across the water to the States? And as far as I can trace, the Yank was a son of a son of theirs. But sure you couldn't go down and that to the Thatcher either, for if you did, wouldn't he go into more high dungeons? Well, wasn't the pace of the road disturbed by the coming of the Yank? For didn't he take a notion in himself that he'd renovate and extend the cottage? And between floats going up and down the road all day with material for the building, and the people going up in the evening to have a gawk at the monstrosity that was going up, sure there was near a bit of quiet to be had. Will you tell me what in God's name was he building? Sure there wouldn't be as many windows in the Tajami Hall. And wouldn't you want as many wives as that fella out there in the fun country to fill it? And the devil picked me brain now if I could think of his name in that holy terror. Did I see the young fella the finches there earlier in the evening? Young Francie? I did. I knew it was you, Francie, huh? And I think it was you all right there when I see you scoffing Nora May's sweet cake. You're finding Nora May's sweet cake? You are, of course, you are. Come up here and talk to me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, up and talk to me. Come on, up here and talk to me. Tell us, when did you get home, Francie? Yesterday, was it? Yesterday. Yesterday, John, yeah. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So the mother must have been delighted to see you. Was she was. Why out. wouldn't she? God help us. Why wouldn't she? And sure, aren't we all delighted to see him? And we all delighted. Yeah. We didn't win a Junior B hurling match since you left. Huh? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Hadn't I to put the young fella the Quinlans into goals? And talk about a sieve. <laughs> and when I looked down the field, and he'd be sitting in the holly, and he'd and he looking up into the sky, and the mouth open, oh, merciful God. Will you tell me, Mary, was there a bit of a want there on that young fella, <laughs> the Queen? I swear, you're right, you know. You know, I swear you are. <laughs> Francie, you're the man to tell me. What was the name of that fella out there on that farm country with all the wives? Can't remember. What? You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. And there's your poor mother above and uh, 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 below in the bog. And she's scrimping and scraping and slaving to keep you in your fancy college up there in, the, in, in, in Dublin. And she's going around telling the people that you were going to be a professor. A professor, mind you. Huh? A professor, me I. Young fellas now, there. That was it. Young. That was his name. Benjamin Young. Wouldn't that have a queer, queer name for a fella? And queerer still was the fact that he had 41 wives. 41 wives. Will you tell me, missus, what would a fella be doing with 41 wives? What? Don't be talking that way. And the priest in the house. Huh? What 
Jo, du und der. Ein Lischen ob, you might lamb something, huh? Be more on your line. And up there, following the women around Dublin, huh? Eating one wife enough for any fella. And that right there, Judge, can one woman do enough of nagging on a poor devil? Imagine what Vati one would do to a poor old devil. And wait till I tell you. And you're going to find this hard to believe, but didn't the world of a lie? Didn't the Yank have facilities installed in the house? Oh, it is true. For wasn't the Thatcher talking to the fella that installed it? And he told the Thatcher that you sat in the contraption, this contraption, and you did your business. And when you were finished, you pulled the chain and it disappeared like magic. Imagine that. And to make matters worse, didn't he have a tub installed for bathing yourself in? Bathing yourself in? Will you tell me what was wrong with a fella going down as far as the lake below in Lockgore once a year when the sting would be gone out of the water to give himself a bit of a wash? Nothing at all. And didn't the contraption and the tub have pride a place in the house? For didn't they have a room all to themselves? With a door in it. And I heard that there was a locking device in the door so that you could do your business or bathe yourself in private. Huh? Imagine that. And you know what else the Thatcher was telling me? That the Yank was after making his fortune over in America, making these contraptions. Apparently, they're all to go over there. But sure. They'll never take off in this country. They're a night at all. Sure the people wouldn't be bothered with them type of things here. Hadn't I a nice little cob at the time that I was breaking? And the Egler O'Donnell, no relation to the Yank, mind you, hadn't he an interest in the little cob? And if it was a nice little animal that the Egler was interested in, wouldn't you get the extra few bob for him? And wouldn't he drop you the odd half a dozen eggs when he'd be passing and he'd get you a nice juicy goose at Christmas. So I thought to myself that I'd take the little animal out on the road to get him accustomed to the people and what have you. And just as we were coming up to the brow of the hill, what you think we had? Only this notorious banging coming up towards us. And the poor little cob got such a fright that he put his tail in his back and he leapt clean out over the ditch and took to the fields. Sure, it nearly took me three days to catch him. And who do you think was making all the noise? Only the Yank and he in one of those new automobile things. Does a wonder he didn't kill half the parish. And to make matters worse, who do you think was plunked up in the seat beside him? Only the widow Murphy and her husband Nat Cowell below in the grave. And then the Yank pulled right up outside her front gate, got out and went over to her side of the automobile and opened the door for her. Far from that, she was reared, I can tell you. And I heard him saying to her, Can I take your messages for your missus? And I heard her saying back to him, in a polite voice, You're a, a kind of a makey-up politeness. Oh, you're such a gentleman. The men around here have no manners. Could I ask you in for a cup of tea? A cup of tea? I never heard of not none of your tea around these parts. And in the door with him. But I could tell by the go hack of the women woman what she had in the head for the yank. It was to get her legs in under the table above at the mansion. And fate I wasn't wrong, for in no time at all hadn't she him up the aisle in front of Father Liam. And no longer was she the widow Murphy, but a Mrs. O'Donnell. And off up to the big house with her. Now, if she thought she was going to get rid of the Yank as quick as she got rid of the first husband. <laughs> that was the mistake she was making. <laughs> For the old Yank was tough, and in no time at all, hadn't he her in the family way, if you know what I mean. And the first child wasn't long born when, she had, when he had her in the family way again. And didn't he knock three fine children out of her? <laughs> three fine sons. And I can tell you this much, by the time she had the three sons reared and the old yank nursed, there wasn't much wind left in her sails after that. The three boys hit off to America. They said they'd like to see the old side where the father came from. And to be fair to the mother, wasn't she big into the education and didn't it stand to them? For I heard they did well for themselves. I suppose it'll take a few years, but one of these days, Want her a yank drive down this here road in a spankin' spank new motor car 
looking to know where his ancestors came from. Thank you very much.